Okay, are we good? Okay, okay, excellent. Okay, okay hello everyone. Uh, this is, my name is Bill Flinoy. I'm the Chair of Economic Development and Employment Committee. Uh, today, we're gonna to start the meeting at 6.11. I believe we have quorum. Uh, before we get started, I want to do two things. One, I want to introduce our new board office liaison, uh, Taya Miller. Is that correct? Did I pronounce your name correctly? Taya Miller. Hi, everyone. Ta Taya. Okay. Could you just want to introduce yourself, Taya? Oh, sure. Um, I started with the district office in March. Um, I was, have only been able to attend one live meeting so far. Um, I invite you all to bring your faces to the meeting because I'd love to meet you in person. Um, we've had, I think, 20 online meetings at this point, um, and they're going just great. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Okay, thank you, Taya. Okay. Uh, now, as far as the online meeting protocols, uh, for right now, the only individuals who are, will be speaking at these meetings will be committee members or board members. Okay, the public, unless I ask you, will not be speaking. Uh, I would go, I'm going to mute everyone and keep you muted, okay, until I ask for discussions. At that point, committee members and board members will only be able to discuss or talk. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can submit them in the chat, okay, and uh, I'll be notified if there's anything that I need to refer to or actually um, take any action on. Okay, with that, I will now go to the committee members, okay, and I will ask committee members to now uh, introduce themselves. Okay, if you want to let them introduce themselves. Okay, uh, starting with my vice chair and going down the line from there. Denise Peterson, co-chair Economic Development and Employment Committee. Uh, hope everyone is doing well and, um, and staying safe uh, yourselves as well as your families. Catherine? Hey, this is Catherine Gelman, um, Acting Secretary for the committee. Happy to be here and to see and hear all of you. Okay, the other committee members just step in. Ron? 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 Ron, you're muted still. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. Kate Yearwood, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi. The other one's faces, who I can see. Um, I'm Kate Yearwood Young. Um, I'm a committee member and a general board member. And hope everyone's had, um, sorry for the background noise, um, hope everyone's had a, a nice of a summer as possible and hey it's great to to meet you uh sorry it has to be over zoom <laughs> okay uh let's see now uh jessica jessica krejci uh committee member and general board member okay uh latrell okay i think she's having problems there you are. Masso, um, committee member and board member. Okay, Lindsay. Hi, this is Lindsay Einhorn, committee member and board member. Okay, is there anyone I'm missing? Isha. Hi, I'm Maisha Morales, committee member uh, and general board member. Nice to meet you, Taya. And hello, hello. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Okay, is there anyone else to, uh, that not uh, called on? Okay, excellent. Okay, with that, tonight we're going to be discussing the state. Uh, sorry, first, I need approval of the agenda. May I have a motion? Okay, I have a second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, perfect. Thank you. We'll go with that. Uh, tonight, we're going to be discussing the statement of community district needs and the committee board budget requests for fiscal year 2022. Um, hopefully, everyone got a chance to look over the information that was sent out to you. Uh, what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be going through 
the different items. Uh, first off, we're going to make um, some suggestions of the things that we might want to uh, remove from the statement of, of needs and budget. Okay. Uh, when we first looked at it, there were only four items that we wanted to remove. Okay. Either because they were funded or because they were not funded. And we want to go from there. Um, Taya, if you want to be able to pull up the, uh, thank you. Okay. As you can see here, uh, these are the most important issues related to what we're looking at right now, youth education, but we want to look at ours. Taya, can you get to our, our section? Okay. okay. Uh, Bill, so just just to explain why this looks a little bit different, the the categories in the district statement of needs that the city produces are a little bit different from the titles of the committees in our district. So you'll see that land use, housing, and economic development are all clumped together for the purpose of this report, and that's the city's choice. Yes, I've seen that also, and I reached out to Rob and asked him about that. Uh, how we're going to submit our individual requests and we can do it on an individual basis even though the city may actually lump them together okay okay um what we're looking at here right now as you can read the significant uh, economic activity uh in brooklyn uh the county are listed here uh one of the things we're looking at right now is based on what's going on throughout the district and throughout the country uh is we're seeing a lot of change going on as far as a lot of people are unemployed. A lot of people are not working. A lot of people are currently um, working from home or basically uh, facing a situation where they're not they're either on employment or their unemployment has now been cut off. Uh, we're seeing a lot of small businesses that are closed and we're also seeing a lot of businesses that are going, who are no longer be able, able to work. Okay, we're actually closing for good. So with that in mind, we're gonna be focused on what we can do for the district based on that, that information. Uh, we're going to be focusing on things along the lines that uh, we can actually do without a lot of working capital uh, and basically something that we can do as far as doing outreach to those individuals who need it most right now during these stressful times. So with that in mind, okay, I'm going to continue to go for it. Is there uh, another item here? Okay, Bill, are you asking for input on what the overarching statements should be? Is that? Yeah, I'm going to be asking for that also. Okay. Um, I'll Should... tell you what. Since we had a working group and that working group was working on this for a little while, I'm going to ask uh, Lindsay to start off with this. Lindsay, you want to give some uh, input here on uh, what we've uh, discussed so far? Uh, sure. Also, uh, Taina, I'm wondering if we can share the documents that we've created to date with you during this meeting so that you could share your screen with everyone and everyone could follow along. Do you mind just putting your email in the chat box? Um, I actually don't have any other documents other than this for this meeting. No, I know we, we would like to share additional documents that we've oh. created in preparation for this meeting. Absolutely. No problem. Drop my yeah. email. Lindsay, I'll, um, I'm pulling it down off the cloud and I'll, I'll send it over. Correct. Um, so I think just to reinforce what, um, what Bill was discussing is that we've been talking about short and long term recovery from COVID as well as the pre existing needs um, that existed prior to COVID, but have only become exacerbated um, by by this disaster. And so Within that, we'd really like to think about unemployment support, small business support, um, attracting new business to the district. Um, and we also would like to talk about um, housing. Um, and although we share that with um, land use, um, it's come to our attention that land use might not be drafting as many um, uh, budget priorities, capital needs, as well as need statements as we are. And so we'd like to contribute um, along that line of effort. Um, and so in addition to talking to you guys about some ideas that we had, 
Um, we also want to solicit your feedback. Um, as members of this community, we're all really invested in this. And so while we've spent a lot of time and research uh, in thinking through some of these ideas, it's really important to us that we come to a consensus um, because it's going to be on us to advocate for these to be prioritized at the general board meeting and with our general board members. Um, and I think we know from previous years that unless we really get that critical mass and get people on board with these ideas, um, some of them may not move forward. Um, and so it's just really important to keep that in mind that we, we want to get as many forward as we can so that we put economic development as one of the um, as having like a large the largest block of, of priorities and um, budget priorities um, because it's such a huge issue right now as part of this COVID-19 recovery. Um, did you receive by any chance the email with the with the items that we wanted to put up on the screen? I have not received any email. Okay, Lindsay, just go Lindsay's with coming but if if it's you actually right now. if you have the document, I can make anybody on this call the presenter, which might be faster. Oh, okay. Um, um Catherine. Hey, I'm saying I'm sending it to you right now. Um, it should it should be here uh, in your inbox, Taya, in like ten seconds. Did you get it, Lizzie? In the meantime, um, begin your discussion, and when she has it, she'll post it. Um, so I did want to mention that a lot of the items that we voted on last year and approved for inclusion did not make their way into the document. And so we've re-included them this year and we'd like to have a discussion about um, if some of these are still high priorities or if some of them have moved um, down down the, um, the list a little bit. So one of the ones that was included last year that did not make it on was a buy, a love your local campaign. Um, buy local, hire local. Um, and this was one that was ranked right at the top when we voted last year on priorities. And so um, we thought it was good to include it again this year. There were also three budget requests um, to, for the 360 commercial district needs assessment um, and the grants and fellow program that was combined with that needs assessment. So you may recall that SBS came to the committee last year and presented on the needs assessments that they were conducting. Um, it was to also provide opportunities for local neighborhood revitalization with recommendations for merchant organizing, public programming, district marketing and branding. And the grants specifically supported that. So the grant provided um, a consultancy for anyone who wanted to create online mer merchant organizing um, and considering how important an online presence is in response to COVID, um, I think that this budget priority could be really beneficial to a lot of our local merchants. Um, in addition to that, if you were awarded a grant, you also got a fellow. And so the fellows are there to support building this marketing campaign, um, the revitalization projects, um, and to have that additional staffing support coupled with the grant, it makes for a really well-rounded program. Um, in addition to that, we like to look at small business repair and reopening grants and loans as part of both the short-term and long-term recovery from COVID. Um, we know that we're going to lose local businesses, but we would like to stem that bleeding as much as possible. Um, we'd also like the city to, to consider funding business incubator programs, specifically one for downtown Brooklyn. Um, as small businesses um, share resources, it can become more affordable to stay in the district. And so if we provide a space for shared resources, affordable workspace options, um, it's gonna foster innovation and creativity as well as ensure that some businesses that can no longer make it on their own have a place to go if they can downsize and continue their business. Um, we'd also like an, a small business incubator program that's by sector and focuses on MWBEs um, as well as a small business digital expansioning and marketing grant outside of um, the community district, uh, the grants that I was uh, describing before, 
um, mostly because those grants are very area specific and would not be for the entire district, but would be by neighborhood and we wouldn't expect the entire district to, to be granted a grant. Um, we also would like to consider having um, local small business recovery toolkit and virtual loaning program. So a lot of the resources and um, and basically the tutorials that have been given have not been um, turned into or transitioned into um, a long-term teaching tool. And so we, we think it would be really great if some of these tutorials were saved um, for longevity because this is, as we know, there are gonna be many waves. Um, we also think it might be good to do a marketing campaign for Brooklyn Workforce One Career Center, um, especially to, with their increased online presence. We want to make sure that they have increased invis visibility in the community, um, not only for those who are unemployed, but also for local businesses. Um, as we know, this is a critical resource at this moment. Um, there was also one for providing funding for employment programs aimed at reducing recidivism. Um, and then also reopening the Franklin Avenue C train entrance on Clawson. Um, we know that in 2015, MTA released a report that the AC line, um, that reopening this entrance would have significant consumer be benefits and also support local business. Um, I know that this might not be the top of our list at the moment, considering the status of transportation, um, but it is worth mentioning and considering if we want to prioritize it again this year. Um, and finally, um, from my end, Catherine, I'm going to turn it over to you in a second. Um, we'd like to expand eligibility for local payroll grants mm. to cover companies with five or more employees. Um, a lot of these grants are focusing on larger businesses that have 10 to 15 employees, whereas some of these smaller businesses are still the lifeblood of our community. And so ensuring that they're folded in to these programs and <coughs> are eligible could be huge um, in ensuring their longevity. And Catherine Gilman, you have a couple that you'd like to to present on as well. I do. I can uh, I can take it up from here. So the last few for you guys to consider and, and lend your feedback on. Uh, one is a voucher program that can help try to alleviate the housing and eviction crisis in the borough, both in residential and commercial spaces. For example, this kind of programming might mean the voucher goes to close the gap between total rent and a percentage of a household's adjusted income or goes to reducing and waiving late fees um, in commercial spaces it might be a voucher program to help maintain small bus businesses in, part in particular in their existing commercial spaces um, another option we were looking at in our budget is Funding a Brooklyn Makers design competition aimed at putting local artists and Brooklyn local makers to work within urban renewal and creative placemaking on our streets. So this means a way that we can spotlight local neighborhood culture, local small businesses and community heroes with the work of local artists. And this kind of competition would allow funding for the artist supplies to create things like murals partnering up with maybe vacant retail spaces um, as a way to lift the neighborhood. And that would be in partnership with existing organizations like the bids and New York City DOT programming and um, allowing for things like a public voting option so that the designs and the themes are chosen by the neighborhoods themselves. So the art is always buying for the people. Another potential project would be funding a Brooklyn Makers street craft fair um, basically using a public space or a private outdoor space like a brooklyn pier for something like um sales of local makers goods um in a covid safe way so saying you know once a week or once a month those spaces are designated so that these people can actually sell their products um, and they don't need a retail a retail space to do so the last item on our list is another voucher incentive for small landlords with empty retail spaces who are going to allow flexible short-term leases for local MWBEs um, as a way to try to help attract entrepreneurship within our community, especially um, by those persons in the wake of all this retail vacancy during and post pandemic, and to also help small local landlords try to stay afloat uh, in partnership with that effort. 
and that is the full list. So okay. Phil, I thank you. What, I think what we wanted to do was ask first for feedback, and then we had created a small agenda for a facilitated discussion to solicit additional ideas. Okay, thank you, Lindsay. Okay, for right now, uh, for the committee, uh, as it's just been suggested, uh, we want feedback about the suggestions made and any suggestions that we did not make. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, if you can signify, okay, if you're interested. Who's that? Miss Peterson. Oh, hi, Miss Peterson. Hi. Please. Oh, hi. Um, good to see all of your faces. Oh, my God. I miss you guys so much. Uh, I hear the babies in the background and all of that. And so it's, it's great uh, for us to get together. But what I wanted to ask is a couple of things. One, I am, uh, I support um, small business initiatives. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's great. They're going to need a lot of help and, um, and we should seek to try to help them the best way that we can through making some of these things mentioned, um, you know, a priority, but I want to add on another priority and, 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 and that has to do with the, uh, tenants that are in these NYCHA developments within community board two that um, I'm not hearing too much about in terms of how do they link into all that was said. Um, I'm, I'm always concerned about them because there is a need there that we must to keep a focus on because they too are a part of this district. And, and so, um, if, if anybody could, could, could answer that, um, that that's, that's sort of my first response and, um, and, and question all mixed in there together, uh, can for the, the great team that put, put the items together, can anybody speak to that? Well, Ms. Peterson, may I make a suggestion? Do you have any idea yourself on how we can do the outreach? Well, it's, 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 it's well, one of the things is about the, uh, there was something mentioned or I read about an outreach, but I'm just trying to figure out. So what is it that's a priority for those those residents? And one of the thoughts that I, I had when I read the material earlier was maybe we perhaps want to consider including something when you talk about grants, that there could be some grant provided for those tenants to have the opportunity to be uh, sort of like OSHA train. So the grant would come because we know that based on what happened in the city council, however many months or a year or, or more, um, the, it, it's a very costly undertaking now to be uh, OSHA certified. So that if there was some grant money available to organization that are in a position to certify and have these courses and certify these individuals, I think that can be helpful um, to, to public housing uh, a tenant. Uh, most public housing tenants are seemingly not entrepreneurs and or small business owners. So we, you know, perhaps want to see how we can, you know, do make it a little easier or sort of in a co-op kind of way that they too will feel like they have been ready um, as, as it relates to what we are uh, seeking seeking to push. So that's one thing. The second uh, thing is, is so, th so that's one example maybe that can be considered. Mm -hmm. the, the, the C train uh, station to me um, I, I, I can't really say that it's a, it's a priority 
in, in light of all the other things as probably a priority priority. So probably when I got to that point, I mean, I, I would hope that some other committees would um, think that that's a, that's a good thing to have. My last question uh, for now is that when we talk about the items generally that were removed or that have been funded, how do, how do we know exactly if it was funded and completed or if it was just funded but nothing has happened? How do we, we go about finding out the status of some of the Okay, uh, we are actually given a form, okay, in the information that actually lists which uh, different uh, items were actually funded, completed, or have not been funded yet. So there will be a list. There actually is a list and it was actually in the packet that was sent out. I don't, I don't, I don't. I, I don't recall seeing it, but okay. Okay, so I'd like to hear what others have to say. Okay, Denise, those are some really good ideas and I appreciate the one about uh, reaching out for OSHA training. That was very important, we forgot about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who has any, uh, thing, any input they would like to add to this? Yeah, Bill, I wanted to add something kind of on the same lines of what uh, Denise was talking about. This is Jessica. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Jessica. Okay. So, yeah, no, I was thinking that, um, and, and I, I totally echo everything that Denise said. I think that all of the um, work that the committee did um, between Catherine and Kate and Lindsay, and especially um, the focus on the small business um, and entrepreneurship uh, within the community. I think that's that's great, and I think that the way that you have those items worded in here um, definitely reflects that. And I was just thinking maybe we could be more specific about um, um, delineating an item specifically that would focus on um, retraining or um, providing these OSHA trainings or and even maybe emphasizing a reskilling, so to say, of um, the uh, general workforce population in response to COVID um, and uh, identifying like what what kind of programs are even needed right now um, to help people find these new jobs. Um, I think I mean, OSHA makes sense, but maybe that's maybe that doesn't make the most sense now because there's also uh, we're likely to see a um, decline in construction. Um, so there, I think there's things like that that need to be evaluated, but maybe if we can just be specific and have a line item specifically that looks at um, retraining, reskilling of the uh, NYSHA population slash low income population within our district uh, and determining what skill sets are now needed um, in this changing environment. I agree. Hey, Bill, do you mind if I make a recommendation? Um, when you say recommendation, this is pretty informal. No, 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 totally. But a recommendation to, to capture Denise's and Jessica's statements. I have a recommendation for how to include them um, in, in the budget priorities we're making. Um, yeah, you can do it now or we can do it uh, in the working group. But if you wish to do it right now, by all means. Well, I, I want to make sure that you guys know like that um, or get, get additional feedback. So maybe I think it's two different budget items, maybe. I think, and a, and a way to get more bang for a buck might be to provide the grants to local nonprofits who are already doing this work and to expand their current programming. And so maybe we do one um, for the OSHA 10, 30, and 40 um, that prioritizes um, low income and vulnerable communities and provide grants to nonprofits who are willing to administer the, the training program. 
Um, and then we can do another one that is a more general um, training program for those who have been unemployed due to COVID-19 and be specific about the COVID-19 layoffs um, as that being um, as that being the, the way to enter the program. Does that make sense to you both? That sounds great to me. I think that captures it for sure. That, that sounds good. I, I, um, I, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, um, I think that's on point as well. The retraining and the reskilling. Uh, I like that concept. Um, I, 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 I do think though that I'm assuming that, um, the, with the construction industry, there are some construction projects that have sort of been in the works already and they're sort of moving forward throughout throughout the city, throughout Brooklyn. And um, as I see it, as I move around, people are, are definitely out there. And I'm just saying, if there's a, if a, if, if, if 10 individuals from uh, NYCHA development go to a work site and say, well, can I work? And so, of course, the, 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 the answer is, unless you have uh, the OSHA certification that you can't. So, and I know that maybe by the time these things are, are validated or, um, or funded, who knows, who knows what anything will be like by then. Um, and so, yes, I'm, 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 I'm okay with that as long as it covers something that is to the benefit of, of the NYCHA residents in some way. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just want to add to that. Uh, Lindsay, I like the idea too of the not-for-profits, but um, someone has to begin to show us what that looks like. So if a not-for-profit, um, you know, sort of like oversight, if the not-for-profits get a million dollars, hypothetically, and uh, I, I would want to sort of follow in some way, and, and I'm not sure exactly how that would be, I would want to follow if if that is designated for for say OSHA 40 well what was your outreach what were the responses based on your outreach and who is exactly sitting in these in these training sessions because uh, I think that's important to know because we can you know support money going to certain organizations and and institutions but if the people, who I'm specifically talking about, if there has not been any very effective and on the ground outreach, they once again don't know about it. Um, then it gets then it gets a little shaky. So then we'll have the grants then would have been given to the benefit would have then gone to people who um, could maybe afford it depending on what that means in this in this pandemic world we in. Um, so I think that part is important that we have to know that there's some oversight to know who's been included and why and when and, and how. Okay, that's, in, that's important too. I agree, Ms. Peterson. One of the biggest problems we've always had is how to do the outreach. We've been trying to figure out ways to do outreach since I've been on this committee. And it's been a problematic since day one. And I like to figure out a way to actually get this information out to the people who need to have it. One day we'll figure it out so that the information is out there efficiently and basically comprehensively to all the individuals who need it. Uh, is there anyone else who has any suggestions from the committee? It's Kate. Um, I was just going to echo the feedback on, on NYCHA specific support. I think that's a really vital piece that we're putting in here. Um, and whether that's through OSHA training or what we can identify as the, the most seamless way to get people reskilled and back to work, I think that'll be up at the top of the list, at least in my in my mind. 
I believe so. I just want to add to that, though. Let's remember, like, how long the list is, the waiting list, to get into a NYCHA development. And I think if we make our strategies a little bit broader, we might be more impactful even. Um, because we'll be expanding the pool, not just to NYCHA, but to the vulnerable people who who really qualify for NYCHA housing, but due to the lack of availability, have been unable to get it. Um, yeah, that's, Lindsay, that makes, that makes great sense. Point. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that, no, no, go ahead, Denise. That's a great, that's a, that's a good point. Um, but I'm not sure. I know that at Farragut Houses, there are 1,400 doors in those, in those, out of those 10 buildings. And so I'm not, I'm not too clear on the people who are on the list waiting to get into NYCHA. You can have categories. If, if there's enough grant, you can, you can open it up, but there ought to be a priority for the people who get oftentimes left behind and, and excluded or not included in the way that they should be in terms of whatever marketing, outreach, um, whatever all of those elements are, but it's, it gets said over and over again about how it just oftentimes don't seem to touch, touch down in those, in those places between Ingersoll, Whitman, um, and Farragut are the other developments. So, um, as is Atlantic Terminal. And so we do, uh, appreciate that, uh, uh, Mr. Flannoy talk over and over and over and over and over. But I can only add that I think the way that you really do outreach is to hit the ground in those places or you link up and partner with people who are already on the ground, i.e. tenant association, other tenants, and the like. You know what I'm saying? So, um, uh, uh, so, so it's, it's, you know, all the points, all, 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 all the points are, are, are good points. Um, but I like to, to see a real, uh, focus there. And if in fact people seemingly are not interested, then if you do the, if, if the outreach is done very effectively, very strategically, um, then you can say, well, we spent five Saturdays in the street and only five people signed up. But if you don't send no, if you don't spend any time there, not you personally, if there's no time spent on the ground, on the ground, on the ground is key to, to the success of a lot of things. If there's no one on the ground to make sure that the people are so notified as to what is going on and encouraged to participate, it's, it doesn't really yield, doesn't, necessarily yield much. Um, and I think the organizations, for example, who may re be eligible and be willing and excited about receiving such, just such a grant, should that be um, so, um, then they too, the fact that they would get this hypothetical $1 million or whatever, $20 or whatever it might be, that they too would need to be a part of a conversation about how do you now get the people inside of this program? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so that's, so I just wanted to say that. Thanks. No problem, Ms. Peterson. Uh, the things you're talking about are action items that if in fact this is approved, we would then take a look at. And it's definitely something we need to look at irregardless. Actually, yeah, that's not a word. Okay. Uh, anything from the board members? Any input? Again, any input from any board members? I do. I do have something to add, right, but I was on mute John. and I couldn't figure out how to <laughs> unmute it. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, John. Okay. Um, I would like to address a couple of the issues that have been raised. Uh, but before I get into that, I have to first submit that you and Ms. Peterson have done a phenomenal job 
And in this very brief period of time, I've learned a lot more about what goes on in your committee than I have in the previous two years. Thank you for that. Uh, that speaks to that issue of communication. You know, I'm overall, and those of you who are on my email list know that I believe in communication and getting people at least on the same page, all the same information. So a lot of what I've heard discussed here, I would like to bring back to the Transportation and Public Safety Committee, particularly as it relates to those specific issues. Clarkson Avenue, we've never discussed. Um, we need to have a format bill that includes all of the committees in a much more meaningful way so that we are working together towards the same goal, pretty much trying to be on the same page. And from my perspective, that doesn't happen enough now. So in order to improve our success rate, we all have to be on the same page. Um, if I could just say a few words uh, as chair of the Myrtle Avenue Business Improvement District, we are dealing very intensively with all of those issues surrounding businesses and the closures and the openings and the funding and the whole like. We have set up a program of donations where we give up to $3,000 to any small business that fits the criteria that we have established. Most of the businesses on Myrtle Avenue are small businesses. We have only a couple of the national chains. Uh, and minority owned businesses. So we need to share that bill with you and Denise and the entire committee because we have had some degree of success at this point. Uh, we are upwards of 90% of our businesses reopening in, since the pandemic began. We were down to <laughs> slightly under 50%. Uh, we worked in conjunction with the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. and we came up with a program to fund those small businesses. So that works. So we got something that works. We can get that detail and see how we can be expanding it in the district. And my other question uh, was, as you talk about small businesses, we have these bids in the downtown Brooklyn area. Are you talking about those businesses also, or is this just uh, 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 the businesses that are outside of a district? Because the district would pretty much be taking responsibility for uh, all of the businesses within the district. And certainly the partnership does all of the downtown Brooklyn small business component. Uh, in terms of communication for the public housing, developments. The Myrtle Bid also sponsors a food pantry program that covers all of the developments that Ms. Peterson mentioned earlier. So I'm not going to mention that I'm not as versed as calling their names as Ms. Peterson is. Uh, however, we have contacts and we are talking about other programs to expand services to those for developments. Uh, in fact, yesterday we were having a conversation about how we reach in our food pantry program, the folks to get them to vote and to do a whole host of other things that you like to think everybody knows and everybody doesn't know. And even if they do know, they need to be reminded. And if they need to be reminded, then they need to get back to you to let you know what they've done. So we have to actually really work in that development uh, and it's not enough to do it once. You have to constantly go back. You have to demonstrate the success to get more buy-in. So, Bill, if we could uh, uh, work with you and Denise, and uh, maybe I could have our uh, district manager meet with you just to give you a sense of what we have done for the small business program on Myrtle Avenue, which has been uh, pretty successful. Uh, John, yes, I would definitely like to have that discussion with you. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm currently also looking to talk to the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce and also the bids 
throughout the district uh, to basically follow the same path that you currently are doing right now. Um, if you could send me that information of what you've done at Myrtle Avenue, I would definitely appreciate it because I want to basically take that same program or that same model and then reach out to all the other bids. I appreciate okay. that. I won't send you a program, but I'm going to send you the minutes and that'll pretty much give you an overview of what the program was designed to do. Uh, we're having a meeting in September at which we'll have more detail. And certainly once uh, we finish that meeting, uh, I'll share that with you also so you could see specifically uh, what is discussed in terms of uh, how we feel that program has been successful. We're actually very happy with it. Uh, we include Pat, Pratt and St. Joe's College in it because their student base is very important to the avenue. And uh, uh, that's, it's just worked. As far as the other item that you mentioned, which is basically getting together with all the different <clears throat> committees and basically trying to get a, a complete uh, working together to get a uh, overview that we can work with as a unit. Uh, I have discussed that also with the board office. You discussed it with the board office. What is the feedback? I discussed it with the board office. <laughs> well, and, we'll, and it's, it may or may not be something we can move forward with, but I have mentioned it also. Do okay. not know what we're going to do from there. Okay, so any, any other suggestions from any board members? Okay. Uh, hearing no other discussion. Uh, what we're going to do is take it to advisement, all the suggestions that have been made right now. Um, I haven't heard anyone mention anything other than the C train uh, as far as objections. Are there any other objections to any of the recommendations that are made? Bill. I'm sure. In addition to that, what about corrective grant working training? Just out of anything else? Yeah, anything else. Okay. Might it be helpful to mention that we plan to vote on these to prioritize them? Uh, yes, I was going to get to that. Okay. Yeah, first I wanted to see if there's anything else from the committee or board. Okay. Uh, what's going to happen now is myself, uh, Lizzie Einhorn, Kate Year, and also um, Catherine. Okay, we're all going to get together and work on this. Um, Catherine has is new to this, so she has a lot of new ideas, and I want to basically hear from her also. But Miss Einhorn and Ms. Uh, Yearwood Young have been doing this for quite some time. That's why I wanted them to take the lead on this and basically explain what they've been doing for the last two years. Okay, so what we're going to do now is over between now and the next meeting, we're going to basically work on suggestions and then come to the next meeting in uh, November, we're going to vote. Okay, basically priority of the suggestions and basically whether or not the committee feels a suggestion should be still included. With that, we'll ne next go to the next item on the agenda. Okay, I need approval of the minutes from June 2nd, 2020. Everyone, hopefully everyone got a chance to read it. May I have a motion? Actually, I don't need a motion. I just need someone to say yes. So moved. Uh, with that, uh, we'll just uh, accept the table presented or written. Okay, and I want to thank our secretary for preparing them. Did a very good job with them. Okay. Um. As far as the chairperson's report, currently right now, uh, the exec committee has been addressing any, sorry, who's that? 
It's very, oh, it's very not here. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, as far as uh, as far as going forward, as far as ex exec committee, we've been handling anything that's come up as far as any action reports or anything that has to be taken care of. We're actually been voting on those things and going forward. Uh, I don't know how we're going to work going forward from here, whether we still have a board meeting or not, but that's something we're looking at going forward. Um, community forum. Okay, first, other business. Is there any other business that any of the committee members would like to bring up? Uh, Bill, I'd like to bring up, however, uh, the community board office can, uh, can assist. So, um, I was at an event called uh, Public Housing. Uh, they had a really big e event on Sunday. Uh, the Taj Gibson Foundation had um, some basketball tournaments. Taj Gibson uh, had the basketball court. Um, he, he did the basketball court. It was a beautiful basketball court, and it was a whole day of activities there in terms of tournaments and, and, and the likes, and it, and it culminated, and I, I believe the police were playing. But another, it was an excellent community event. But in in the in the in there was different discussions, and one of the things that was said was that you see all of the work that is going on down there. Uh, I, I'm assuming between both Ingersoll and and Walt Whitman. I know for the Ingersoll side because it was said is that apparently when they put up this netting and all of these different things in preparation to to do what needs to be done. Our planned how uh, low apparently didn't think about all the surveillance cameras. Denise, you're breaking up. We lost you. Cameras development. That I think this is that we can um, sort of relay to the community board office to sort of get a conversation started as one of the places um, because I think it's so critical um, in light of many of the issues that they're having down there uh, now and. Um, there's a, a security issue if there's no surveillance cameras, if they've been blocked and, um, or I don't know that they've been taken down so much that it may just be blocked and there, there's no use for them at this time, that they're under, they're, they're, they're in a very bad place without minimally having working surveillance cameras. So I, I just wanted to sort of put that out there. It was very concerning for me uh, to hear that. Um, and that if they didn't consider that during the course of the planning, then that's a problem because people deserve to feel as though they're safe to some degree. Um, but, you know, there's no cameras there. So people are wondering, like, so how does this work? you know, for their safety. And so I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, Denise, have you said anything in writing to the board office? No, I haven't. I just, just Sunday, just two days ago, I, 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 I heard about it. Okay. I'm going to suggest. So I, I can, a, I can. I, I would can. suggest that because that is an item of safety. And a lot of that is very important right now, currently in the district. Denise, I'll make sure that Carol Ann Church administers the Transportation and Public Safety Committee gets that note. Sure, thank you. Okay, Denise, you're breaking up a lot. We can't really hear you. If I could just comment that that um, should that's also what I'm trying go. To it should go to the council member. 
and also the state representatives so that everybody's making telephone calls to the respective public housing security division of NYCHA to get moving on. They need to get inundated from all people possible because that's how we get priority and get things happen. Very true. And suffice to say, Mr. Flanoy, local news, let them do a report on New York One that has pictures of the public housing project, cameras covered, because we had a shooting on Myrtle Avenue, as you are all aware of. So that means automatically there's a focus. Let's take advantage of this focal period, as unfortunate as it is, and get all of our folks who are responsible to weigh in with NYCHA. And, and I haven't been down there at night, so uh, to, or to even see or to date, it was it was it was a fairly reliable. It was a good reliable source who who just happened to be having a conversation with me. And that is what was said. So I'm just relaying information. I can't tell you that it's a fact. So I think the question is, is it a fact? And if it is, then of course, all of those people need to be put on notice if they have not already been put on notice. So that I, 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 don't, I don't know the part B to it. Okay, thank you, Denise. Okay, uh, another two more items here that I'm gonna to bring to the attention of the committee and of the board and uh, any of the uh, individuals who are currently still here at the meeting. Uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard has two items that I want to report. Uh, they have current opportunities that are available between August 26th and September 9th. Um, currently, they have a cabinet maker position, uh, driver, fabricator, director of partnerships, security, uh, network, and administrator. Uh, marketing and communication manager, electronics technician, wiring technician, and a technical writer assistant. Okay, to reach out to them, that's the Brooklyn Navy Yard, uh, and that's the, at the Employment Center. Um, the number for the Employment Center is 718-907-5996. And in addition to that, uh, the Brooklyn Navy Yard has a virtual information session. Uh, that's every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Uh, contact uh, recruit at bnydc.org, or you can also call 718-907-5996. Again, that's every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Okay, with that, uh, we hey, have Bill. no other business. I had yes. one other thing for other business. Apologies. Okay. Um, so a, about a year and a half ago, we started discussing social media protocols. Um, and I think considering some of the conversations we've had about how difficult communication is and considering that we're not all going to be together in person with general meetings where we're usually sharing flyers and announcements, I think a lot of that is about to change. I think it's an incredibly timely um, proposal to take up again. Um, and I wanted to raise it to the committee and I, I plan to raise it to, to Mr. Singletary as well as at the general meeting. Um, but I don't think we've, there's a more important time that we could take up that issue again. Agreed. Um, community forum, this is for non-committee members only. Is there anyone in the community that would like to speak for two minutes? I see nothing in the chat. Okay. Okay. With that, uh, I'll now go to ask for a motion to adjourn. No more. Okay, second. Okay, just wave. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay, uh, with that, 
Um, meeting is adjourned, 7-Eleven. Good, everybody. Good night. I want to thank uh, everyone that did work uh, for the Committee of Working Group. And I also want to thank our host for hosting us into this meeting. Thank you. Without you, we could not have done this. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, all. Good night. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.